Okay, our last talk of the session will be given by Don Yang from Nanjing Technical University. He's going to talk to us about metal organic frameworks for methanol dehydration. Can you hear me? Okay. So, um, it's a great honor to be the last speaker after today. So, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, the sites on uh, uh, metal organic framework nodes, or iron based metal organic framework nodes. I work uh, as a postdoc in uh, Professor Busquets' uh, group for uh, six years. Uh, so, I, after uh, leave the group, I still, still work on metal organic frameworks. So let's uh, firstly uh, talk something uh, big. You know, so iron is popular used uh, as a metal uh, in nature. So <coughs> from a regular basis, so uh, in our blood, so it, uh, in, uh, it's uh, used as uh, oxygen transfer uh, metals, or, or it uh, can be used uh, as a uh, uh, active site for channeling reactions, such as methane uh, oxidation or uh, nitrogen reduction. Um, look at the structure. Actually, nature uh, do not only use uh, single uh, uh, iron as uh, active site. Uh, it depends on how many electrons involved in the um, in the reaction. Actually, missing two maximal uh, two electrons, so uh, nature developed a two uh, uh, dimeric uh, um, iron center to catalyze the reaction. And the most uh, sophisticated uh, cluster uh, developed by nature is uh, uh, iron seven and. Uh, Plus the modulum of this uh, cluster, um, so uh, just involved in the uh, six electron transfer for nitrogen reduction. Um, those are actually at, under uh, rest condition, so the enzyme not working, so we characterize uh, um, the crystal structure. But under reaction condition, the mechanism is uh, become very complicated, right? So. Uh, from the scheme, uh, actually most of the intermediate we uh, we do not uh, we cannot uh, monitor by uh, experiments, so it's uh, proposed uh, structures. Um, so most of the people actually we are um, more interested about uh, uh, the, the intermediate such as uh, oh, sorry uh, intermediate such as the uh, uh, iron oxo uh, groups. This can directly actually active uh, methane to uh, methanol. But uh, uh, if we look at uh, the mechanism, actually most of the time, uh, this uh, active site is occupied by uh, ligands such as hydroxyls or uh, aqua or carboxylate or, uh, or just uh, methoxy groups. Um, so therefore, we, we probably need to pay more attention to, uh, to this, uh, this ligand. Um, now, in terms of understanding about the real uh, active sites. The other thing I want to emphasize uh, is that there's uh, more than one site involved in the catalysis. There's one, two, three ligands. Uh, I highlighted in, uh, in numbers. So people uh, actually want to uh, mimic the uh, function of uh, enzymes, um, but uh, most of the time uh, we don't know what we uh, are making. Um, so actually, in this uh, regard, so uh, metal organic framework actually is a very good platform to uh, mimic the function of uh, enzyme. Uh, it's made up uh, by the metal uh, ion and uh, organic linkers uh, coordination from a crystalline uh, structure. So uh, it can be viewed as a metal complex expand to the space. Um, so uh, because uh, the, the structure is highly tunable, so we can uh, rationally uh, tune the structure by adding some functional groups. Um, so as you may know that most of the morphs are probably still not very uh, stable, but uh, they still have some morphs are stable. Uh, for iron-based morphs, so mu-53 uh, and uh, mu-100 is the most stable one. So uh, the first one is uh, have a uh, iron OH round node and uh, straight force around uh, zero point. Uh, Nine nanometer. For second one, so uh, mu 100 has a uh, iron three oxide node. Each one bound with uh, six uh, carboxylate groups, and they leave three uh, beta side. These have uh, giant pores, like uh, uh, three nanometers. Uh, so these two models are both developed uh, by institute in France. Um, so there is already some examples uh, uh, 
uh, using these two morphs to catalyze the reaction of uh, methanol uh, mes uh, to methanol. So they both reacted active for the reaction. Um, but uh, one thing is that uh, from the learning, uh, from the scheme, the figure from the nature catalyst, actually nature used more than one site to catalyze the reaction. Um, so in, this, in, that, uh, in that thinking, so probably we need to consider that the structure may be more diverse. So there may be some other sites except the, the vacancy site in the train, train, train on the top, um, a participant in the reaction, actually. Uh, actually, defects is very popular uh, in the morph structure. Um, in a very uh, well-investigated system, UIO66, uh, it, it can be uh, synthesized from the chlorine chloride, a reaction with uh, H2BDC uh, at uh, 120 Celsius in uh, DMF. So, a motivator can be added to the system to slow down the crystallization, and then you can get some more. So motivators are actually uh, sometimes can be formic acid or acetic acid. Actually, defect uh, is formed by the comp uh, competition between the motivator and the linkers. So um, in, in a solution, actually, uh, both motivators and linkers bond to the nodes. Uh, when the motivator bonds to the nodes, it forms defects. Uh, defects is very important for uh, morph catalysis. Actually, in this work, I will show you that uh, not only those uh, um, uh, motivator, but also the solvent itself can uh, bond to the uh, node site. Uh, regarding to the chemistry of metal oxide nodes, so uh, Professor Gates and uh, I have uh, working on aluminum and zirconium-based morph for many years. So here's some of our publication. So normally, uh, what we do is uh, we pick a four a formate uh, methoxy or uh, hydroxyl groups. Uh, these three ligands as a problem molecular. So I'm uh, trying to understand uh, how this molecular bond to the size and how they uh, react with each other. Um, so th this research actually um, we 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 move to uh, iron iron based morphs. Want to use this uh, still using these three uh, ligands to understand the size on, on the node. Uh, so for synthesis, uh, mu 100 can be synthesized from uh, iron chloride reaction with H3BDC. And the uh, solvent this time is again water, so uh, one, uh, 130 Celsius, uh, three days, you can get some off. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this morph uh, ideally will bond to six uh, carboxylate groups. And leave uh, uh, leave this uh, three vacancy sites actually, <coughs> because uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, the experimental data show that uh, DI water can also compete uh, with the linker to bond to the uh, node sites, which will uh, form defects. If you look at the structure, actually defects are neighboring with the vacancy sites, and then uh, eventually they, they will form a, a, a paired sites. We want to know the ligand, the initial ligand after synthesis, what is in there. Uh, from the infrared spectroscopy, uh, so we can, we can see um, the band from, uh, from uh, mu 2 oh this one is 3655. We referenced the paper from uh, Basca in uh, 1993. Um, also, we see that it, uh, on the vacancy side, uh, this one is on the defect sites. Uh, this, uh, the, on the vacancy side, actually, there's some uh, extra framework uh, H2BDC linkers. Also, we also see some chloride in here. And uh, this ligand actually can be um, removed by a treatment uh, in the formic acid in water solution. So, um, so after, after reaction, so this uh, mu2OH can be uh, transformed to a bidentate uh, uh, methoxy and uh, we also see the monodentin methoxy here, so there's peak acid region. Uh, in addition, so we also see the terminal which groups, so we see the, uh, the, the, the shift. This is a different species. Um, so uh, next, uh, we want to test uh, uh, these two samples uh, in terms of uh, cat catalysis for methanol dehydration. Uh, so surprisingly, the first uh, sample, the initial sample actually is completely inactive. 
Um, so after remove the block ligands on the vacancy sites, actually the morph become active, but it deactivates uh, very rapidly. Um, so I will say uh, after characterization by XRD and BAT, the, the morph is stable, stable at this stage. So uh, we decide to uh, see what happens during the mass dehydration uh, catalysis. So for the first uh, sample, actually, uh, we, we flow a methanol into onto the MOF surface. So uh, we see the band from year 2 OH group decrease. Uh, and uh, in the mean, meantime, so a uh, bidentant uh, uh, mesoxy appear. Uh, because this, uh, this uh, CO region, this can be assigned to the bidentant uh, mesoxy groups. Um, Interesting, so the, the blood ligand here actually did not uh, react with methanol. Uh, it, uh, it cannot be replaced by any methoxy ligand here. Uh, that's why you know, it's, uh, there's no, um, no activity at all. So on, uh, in, co in contrast, actually, um, after remove those blocking ligands with a uh, formate, these ligands are more reactive with uh, methanol. Um, so we can see a different uh, thing. So First, we still see the bidentin mesoxy, and in addition, we see that uh, uh, the, the monodentin uh, mesoxy on the, uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the vacancy sites. So this, uh, this structure, we think, is the active site for the reaction. And next, uh, we want to understand why the catalyst deactivates. Okay, so this time we uh, do the same thing at uh, 150 Celsius. Um, so we did not see the terminal, the, 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 the mesoxy species on, on vacancies at this time because uh, we believe it will react with uh, other mesoxy group to form the methyl ether very fast. And uh, what we see here is actually uh, a band, a very low uh, CH variation region. We think it should uh, assign to uh, methanol bound to the uh, iron 2 plus. So that means iron was uh, re uh, reduced uh, from iron 3 to iron 2. Because uh, we, in this case, we don't have uh, two methoxy together, so we, we lose the activity. Uh, further, so we treat the sample with uh, water again. So uh, we see this time both, uh, both hydroxyl appear, the, um, uh, this uh, mu2 and terminal groups. You can see the, the, the blue curve, the, both uh, also appear here. That means uh, iron 2 was uh, oxidized again by water to, to form the iron 3. Okay, so here's the chemistry we observed in our other, um, um, experiment. Uh, essentially, this uh, what, what we also uh, see on aluminum based uh, mu 100, but differently because uh, iron can be reduced to iron 2, um, so it de it deactivates during catalysis. Also, the other thing is uh, water can actually regenerate the, the, the site. Um, from the color, you can see that uh, uh, after reduction of the one of the iron, it's become you know from the brown to black. And uh, if we use water to uh, regenerate it, to, to get, get brown again. Uh, stability. Okay, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the morph is stable after all the treatment and uh, catalysis. Uh, one thing, one more thing we want to know is the number of defects, right? So catalysis is about the size. How many do you have? We're using uh, H1MR to quantify the uh, defect size. Um, from the data, we can calculate number uh, of uh, 0.96, is around one, uh, one per node. Um, so this number actually is pretty high um, compared with the aluminum-based model because our pre uh, previous uh, publication show in aluminum based mu 100, there's only uh, 0 0.1 uh, per node. So this is a pretty high number. Um, so this is the activity again. So um, because the number is around one and uh, Tun of the, um, the sample is two in 24 hours. Um, so I think that these two combined together provides a, a strong evidence showing that uh, uh, this is a bimolecular reaction that uh, requires two uh, mesoxy bound to the sites. So deactivation actually is because um, because uh, the iron 3 was uh, re uh, reduced to iron 2, but uh, iron 2 can be 
uh, regenerates partially, only partially, it's not so fully recovered by water vapor. Uh, on, the, on the end, I, I would like to conclude the, the talk. So I show that uh, mu 100 iron has defects. They play a key role in uh, methanol dehydration. Also, I uh, show the chemistry about the ligands uh, replacement. Also, the active site, the possible active sites, and uh, the mechanism for uh, deactivation. Uh, I think I persuade you, possibly <laughs> persuade you, uh, metal uh, oxide cluster nodes in MOPS is a very good platform to understand the catalytic reaction. Uh, so I would like to thank Professor Bruce Gates. So yesterday, actually, he still uh, worked with me to revise this uh, slides. Uh, also, thanks uh, to students from Nanjing Tech University. Uh, thanks the foundation uh, funding from uh, uh, from China and also DOE. Thanks to all. Thank you. Some time for questions. Then, how do you, for a particular node, when one of the iron sites might become iron two, how do you think about, does that whole node become deactivated or can one of the other iron sites still be active or how do you sort of count a site within this, within the framework? Uh, uh, if one, one iron actually uh, convert from uh, iron 3 to iron 2, actually the whole node uh, deactivated. Because, okay, if you calculate the, uh, the charge of the node, except uh, there's, there's actually uh, need, requires one, uh, one ion to balance the charge. If you remove that charge from the node system, there's nothing, nothing you know, can, be, can be bound to the to node. Uh, there's just no, no any side can bound to, uh, to, to, to the node anymore. You know, that, that's the point. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, more on the chemistry side. The, after these reactions occur, what is your supernate, your liquid after that? Is it colored? Is it, uh, you know, is there any iron leaching out or anything else occurring? No, it's, it's, it's in gas phase reaction. It's gas phase reaction. Yeah, gas phase, 150 Celsius, yeah. Sorry. Good. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, if not, then we will close today's session. Join me again in thanking the speaker. Thank you.